美术。Oh Allah, benefit me with what you taught me, and teach me what will benefit me, and provide me with beneficial knowledge. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, and welcome to the fifth in a series of Arabic tutorials brought to you by Maysour. In conjunction with Al Medina students. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at number one, prepositions, referred to in Arabic as haruful jar. Number two, how to ask a question using aina. Number three, how to use pronouns, referred to in Arabic as Domair regarding people and things, and finally, number four, we're going to be looking at the difference between masculine and feminine names. Quick recap: If we wanted to express an ism, a noun that is nakira, indefinite, we simply place a tanween at the end of the word. For example, sarirun means a bed. Similarly, maktabun means a desk. We mentioned that the un sound at the end of the word coincides with the indefinite article a or an in English. We also mentioned if we wanted to change the ism, the noun, from being Nakira, indefinite, to being ma'rifa, definite, we simply add al at the beginning of the noun. So, for example, sarirun becomes as sariru, the bed, and maktabun becomes al maktabu, the desk. We can see in this example that once alif and lam has been added to the noun, it then loses the tanween, leaving only one wama remaining. The noun is also referred to being ma'rifa, definite. So we say as-sariru, and not al-sariru. This is because this noun, sarirun, begins with a harfu shamsiya, a letter of the sun. For an explanation of the letters of the sun and moon, please refer back to lesson number four. What are the letters of jar? Ma hiya huruful jar? An ism, a noun. The ends in a bomma in Arabic is called marfu', and this is the normal ending of an ism, a noun in Arabic. For example, al baytu jadidun means the house is new. In this example, both words al baytu and jadidun are referred to as marfu'. This is because they both end in a bomma. So we can refer to any one of these two nouns as ism marfu', a noun that is marfu', ending in a bomma. However, when a harf from the huruful jar, the prepositions, comes in front of a noun, it will change the vowel. Of the last letter from a bomma to a kasra. For example, ila plus asma'u becomes ila sama'i. Likewise, ala plus al maktabu becomes ala al maktabi. In addition, min plus 
البيت becomes من البيت and finally في plus الغرفة becomes في الغرفة الله says in the Quran لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله If we had sent this Quran down upon a mountain, you would have seen it humbled and coming apart from the fear of Allah. Using the word Aina. Aina is an ism, a noun, from the Asma'ul Istifham, the nouns of questioning. It means where and is used when asking a question. For example, we can say, Aina Muhammad, where is Muhammad? Or we can say, Aina al Kitab, where is the book? And likewise, we can say, Min Aina Anta, where are you from? In the previous slide, we covered the Huruf al Jar, prepositions. And we said that Min, as you can see, in this example here is a harf from the huruf al jar the prepositions and when it comes in front of a noun it changes the noun to end in a kasra however this isn't the case when min comes in front of the word aina this is because aina is one of those words in the arabic language which is Mabniyun. It's fixed, which means the last vowel of the word does not change. It would be incorrect to say min aini anta or min aini anti if you are addressing a female. How to use domair pronouns. Domair is the plural of domir. It means pronouns. We mentioned in lesson two that Arab grammarians consider pronouns as nouns. We also mentioned that they replace the name of a person that has already been mentioned. For example, Aina Yasir. Where is Yasir? We can say. Yasir fil masjidi, which means Yasir is in the mosque. However, instead of saying Yasir fil masjidi, we can reply by saying Huwa fil masjidi. He is in the mosque. Similarly, we can say Aina Amina, which means Where is Amina? Aminatu fil matbakhi. Amina is in the kitchen. Or we can say, Hiya fil matbakhi. She is in the kitchen. We can see in these two examples that the pronouns huwa meaning he and hiya meaning she have been used to replace the name of a person. In the first example, huwa replace the name Yasir and in this example here replace the name Amina when referring to masculine and feminine nouns we can also use these same Doma'ir pronouns for example Ain al-Kitab where is the book? Huwa ala al-Maktabi it is on the desk in this example, Al-Kitab is a masculine noun. So when referring back to it, we use the masculine Domir pronoun Huwa. In this context, it means it. On the other hand, when referring to an ism, a noun that is Mu'annath, feminine, we use the Domir 
pronoun here. For example, Aina Sa'a. Where is the watch? Here ala sariri. It is on the bed. Asa'a in Arabic is a feminine noun. And one of the signs of a noun being feminine in Arabic is at marabuta at the end of the word. The domir, the pronoun here in this example has replaced the word asa'a and in this context means it. However, there is an exception to this rule. For example, the names Hamza and Osama in Arabic are masculine nouns, although they still have a ta'ul marbuta at the end of the word, which, as we mentioned before, is a sign or indication that the noun is indeed feminine. Although these two words end with a ta'ul marbuta at the end of the word, they are in fact masculine nouns. Similarly, a word that does not end with a ta'ul marbuta is considered mudhakkar, masculine. However, there are exceptions to this rule. For example, the word ashamsu in Arabic means the sun. Although this word does not end with a ta'ul marbuta and there is no sign or indication to indicate that it's a feminine noun, it is in fact a feminine noun. In cases such as ashamsu, where the word doesn't end with a ta'ul marbuta so as to indicate that it's a feminine noun, it's best advised that when a student is learning any word in the Arabic language, they also learn its gender. And likewise, the names Maryam and Zainab are examples of feminine nouns that do not end with a ta'ul marbuta masculine and feminine names. Finally, the vast majority of masculine names end in tanween. For example, Muhammadun, Zaydun, Abbasun. However, feminine names on the other hand only carry one Dhamma and will never ever carry tanween. For example, we can say Fatimatu, Aminatu, Ruqayyatu. We can see that these names do not end with the Bommatain, the Tanween. So it would be incorrect to say Fatimatun, Aminatun, and Ruqayyatun. In summary, we've looked at prepositions referred to in Arabic as حروف الجر and what they do once they enter upon a noun. We also looked at number two, how to ask a question using aina. We also looked at number three, using domair pronouns regarding people and things. And finally, Number four, we briefly looked at the different endings of masculine and feminine names. I hope you've enjoyed and more importantly benefited from today's lesson. And I ask Allah Ta'ala that he accepts this small effort from me and from you. Wajazakumullahu khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.